British singer-songwriter, record producer, and designer, Jacob Tayo Cruz, was born in the early 80s to a Nigerian father and a Brazilian mother in London, England. Even though he's known to the world as Tayo Cruz, he was actually born with a much more Nigerian-sounding name. Him and his older brother were raised in a beautiful five-bedroom house in Northwest London and attended boarding schools. As a child, he looked up to his father and briefly considered following in his footsteps to become a lawyer. He soon realized that his heart wasn't in it. What he was very much into was music. He recorded his first demos as a teenager and began taking his musical goals more seriously during his post-secondary years. His professional music career started with a pen and paper before he ever touched a microphone. He began writing songs as part of American songwriter, producer, and record executive Tricky Stewart's writing collective. His writing was so good that it would give him his first accolade, a Brit Award for Best Single, in 2005 for co-writing Will Young's hit song, Your Game. The very next year, Tayo's debut single, I Just Wanna Know, was released under his own label, Rockstar Music London. His undeniable multifaceted talent led to an unprecedented joint venture record deal with two universal music companies across the UK and the US. The success he experienced in the UK was no small feat, but making it across the pond is the ultimate dream for many ambitious pop stars. Tayo was unable to fully enjoy the moment since he found himself another victim of the rise of illegal downloading, no doubt compounded by the fact that fans weren't able to purchase his songs until about six weeks after they were first heard on the radio. Since songwriting and production is known to typically be the more profitable endeavor in the music industry, Tayo was asked in a 2008 interview with popjustice.com why he decided to venture out from the shadows and take center stage. I think every producer grew up dreaming of being an artist. It's the first dream you have as a kid, to be a pop star. When you're watching Michael Jackson dancing around on stage, you want to be that. Every time I recorded a demo for someone else, people would ask me why I wasn't recording it for myself. So I thought it was worth a try, if only to show people what I'm about and see how well it was received. His second single called Moving On dropped the following year, and several months after that, he achieved his highest chart ranking with his third single, Come On Girl, featuring Luciana. It peaked at number five on the UK singles chart. A little known fact about Tayo was that at this time, he was on the verge of releasing a different track for his third single, a song called Umbrella, that would go on to become a huge hit for a certain Bajan pop star. The original plan was for the track to go to Britney Spears, but after it was decided that it really wasn't her style, Rihanna jumped on it. In 2008, Tayo released his debut album titled Departure, which he wrote, arranged, and produced. The album achieved certified gold status in the UK and earned him a MOBO nomination. The album release wasn't all positive though. Fellow British singer and songwriter Corinne Bailey Ray tried to sue Tayo in relation to one of the tracks on his project called She's Like a Star, claiming that it was a ripoff of her song called Like a Star. She threatened to have his MySpace page deleted and a lawsuit would ensue if he didn't remove the song from the platform. Luckily, Tayo had great lawyers who elicited the services of a musicologist to compare the songs, and he agreed that they were nothing alike. The following year, he released his second album, Rockstar. The album includes his smash hit, Break Your Heart. The song shot all the way to number one in the UK and the US. The success of the song made him an international superstar and attracted the attention of Mercury Island Def Jam, who were excited about releasing Break Your Heart in the United States. His label mate, rapper Ludacris, even jumped on the remix version. Another major hit of the album was the track Dynamite. It went to number one in the UK and just missed the top spot in the US, settling at number two. In subsequent interviews, Tayo explained that he woke up in the middle of the night with the lyrics to the song in his head raced downstairs in his underpants, and started writing. Also at this time, Tayo launched his brand named Rockstar, a fashion and accessories company which had a focus on sunglasses. In interviews, he said that the motivation behind starting the brand had to do with the importance of diversifying in order to keep yourself in business. The focus on sunglasses was born out of his personal love of the eyewear. 2011 was a particularly great year for Tayo. He received his first US Billboard Award, 
released a collaborative single called Little Bad Girl with French DJ David Guetta and Ludacris that became a worldwide smash, and released his third album, titled Tayo, which also included several hits. On Twitter, Tayo revealed that he made the decision to name the album Tayo after he expressed his annoyance at people constantly pronouncing his name wrong. He then turned his attention back to his brand, Rockstar, which attempted to revamp itself with a name change to RXTR, a backronym for Riots and 12 Rebels. New products such as watches were also launched. However, several years later, the brand's website would be found to redirect to Tayo's personal website and its social media platforms would no longer post regular updates. Moving on, Tayo announced the release of a new app he created called Kiwi in August 2013. He described it as Instagram and Snapchat meeting Spotify and SoundCloud. He wanted a place where people could come to keep tabs on what he was up to in his everyday life and he could also drop a single and monetize it right away. Unfortunately, it failed to attract the level of investment needed to compete with other popular social media platforms and ultimately shut down. Over the years and in between his own projects, he continued to write songs and work on productions for other artists such as Cheryl Cole, David Guetta, Brandy, Usher, and Jennifer Lopez. By late 2013, Tayo had announced on social media that his fourth album was on the way. He did release a single, however, no album has yet to be released. Tayo continued to drop the odd single here and there over the next several years. After the release of the track Row the Body, featuring rapper French Montana in 2017, he spoke about the difficulties artists face in the current pop landscape trying to be the best. I suppose it's more difficult to engineer a number one. You need to have more pop cultural relevance in the sense that it's not just your music that makes you big. It's a lot of social media, a lot of viral things, influencers. It's not just the song, it's who else is listening to the song. The dawn of a new decade prompted Tayo to finally venture onto the video-focused social media app, TikTok. Sadly, just days after he opened his account, he deleted everything and logged off for good. At the beginning, he uploaded what he thought were some fun videos, then out of nowhere was hit with a barrage of hateful and abusive comments. He expressed his feelings in one of his last posts, saying, Never in my life have I had a more negative experience than the past few days on here. Take care of your mental health and be kind to each other. To those that have love for me, thank you. This community is not for me. After deleting everything on TikTok, he posted a goodbye message on his Instagram. Thanks to everyone sending me supportive messages here and on Twitter. I'm definitely not going back to TikTok anytime soon. My body was shaking and I had suicidal thoughts. I pride myself on being mentally resilient, so the fact that I felt that way shocked even me. Some users posted hateful, mocking videos, which spurred a feedback loop of negativity where more and more people began to join in on the mockery and hate. My intention was to make some fun videos and interact with my fans, but some, whom I won't mention, were averse to that. For my own mental health, I would rather be where I'm welcomed. For now, TikTok is not that place. Social media shouldn't be like this. Sadly, it is. He then went on to delete all of his social media posts on Instagram and Twitter. Tayo forged ahead, and just a few weeks after the TikTok fiasco, he released his latest work, a track called 2020, a diss track of sorts aimed at the abysmal year everyone experienced worldwide. Since late 2020, Tayo has been MIA on all social media, so it's hard to know what he's currently been up to. Hopefully, he's enjoying his social media sabbatical and will return soon with not only new music, but a whole new outlook as well. Thanks for watching. Please like, share, and comment. Also, don't forget to subscribe and turn on your notifications so you won't miss any future videos. See you next time.